Hello my friends and welcome to the Capital Allocation channel. Today I want to give you a quick overview of the Ichimoku Cloud Trading System and go over a few stocks on my watch list for the upcoming week. On this channel I go over value stocks, dividend paying stocks, cryptocurrencies, and research on future technology investing trends such as biotech, automation, and artificial intelligence. If this content interests you, please feel free to leave a like, consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching and let's get right to it. All right, so before I get into the particular equities that I'm looking at this week, I want to give you some information on a trading strategy that I've been looking into researching a little bit and trying out recently, and that is called the Ichimoku Cloud. So this is a trading system developed in Japan, and there are five particular parts to this trading system. So the first is the baseline. So this is essentially the 26 period average. It's the mean between the last 26 periods. And then there's the conversion line. That is a shorter term moving average. That's essentially equal to the mean of the last nine periods. So if you take the middle of these two and project that forward 26 periods, you'll get the leading strand A. If you take the mean of the last 52 periods, you go right in the middle, take that mean, and you project that out 26 periods from the current period, you get the leading strand B. You also have a lagging strand. So the lagging strand is essentially the price action, which is uh, projected back 26 periods. So this can give you several different signals, shorter term, intermediate term and longer term. The way you get price signals through this strategy are if you have the conversion strand crossing over the base strand. That is one short term to medium term alert. Then you can also have the price breaking through either the conversion strand or the base strand. That's another shorter to medium term alert. If you have these in, this, in the middle of this cloud, that is an equilibrium zone. That is a place where there's indecision in the market. Buyers and sellers are competing and it's really, there's no clear direction. So this is a place in this cloud where you don't wanna make a trade generally. Uh, when you have the, uh, the conversion and the base strand and the price going above this leading strand B here, when you're above this cloud, that is a medium to longer term alert or essentially a point where you could consider entering a trade. When you have that confirmed by the lagging strand going above this cloud, that's telling you your trend is very far confirmed. This is a longer term trend to the upside. So depending on your time frame, you can use strategies based on the crossover of the conversion of the base for shorter term trades, scalps, uh, more shorter term trading, or you can do longer term swing trading or investing based on crossing over the top of this cloud. So I like to pair this with the MACD. Uh, the MACD gives you shorter term trading signals, but there are a lot of false alarms. For example, here you have a MACD crossover suggesting the price will go further to the upside but because this is currently in a downtrend this is a false signal so you get a lot of these but if you pair this with the ichimoku cloud trading strategy you can see that the price is still converging around this conversion line you don't have crossover of the baseline and you're still in a downtrend so this is a slower system to trigger which can allow you to prevent yourself from falling for a lot of the false alarms that can be given by the MACD. In addition, you can use the MACD to get essentially an idea, a confirmation uh, that and an earlier indicator that you could be having a legitimate crossover and you can confirm that with this system. So that's just a background. Um, it's an interesting system that I'm looking into and I think yeah, this is more used in Asia it's not really used as much here and a lot of times systems they use 
um, can be interesting and you can have a different perspective on the market. So yeah, just a quick introduction there so you understand what I'm looking at. Uh, and the first stock I want to look at is Rio Tinto. So this is one of the largest mining companies in the world. They're highly diversified. Here we have the stock in a downtrend. So there is no alert signal here yet. Uh, this thing has fallen quite a bit and I expect at some point this thing is going to turn around. This stock pays around now a 10 to 11% dividend. Uh, and this, this stock, this company is has been around since the 1800s so this is a very stable company before I entered I would want to see well I actually do currently hold the stock in my portfolio but if I was planning to add more which I do I really like this stock I would want to see really this thing getting above the cloud um, this is more of a long-term hold for my personal uh, portfolio so I would be waiting for longer term signals in this market and you still have a sell on the trading view technical indicator so this is just one I'm watching at the moment um, this stock I think is really in value territory it's fallen quite a bit uh, it's got a PE of 5 the price to book is a little high uh, around 2.5 uh, although I think with all of the um, monetization all the money printing i think essentially the commodities could go way up and the price therefore the price to book value the value of the commodities land and resources that this company holds could go down quite a bit also this company clearly has a monopoly you can't really start a mine it's way too capital intensive and with all the environmental concerns it's simply not really possible um, this has a current ratio of 1.8, so it's really well capitalized. It's got a pretty good return on equity, 23, and with a company that's well over 100 years old, the debt to equity is less than 30%. So this is a really well-managed company paying over a 10% dividend. People are chasing momentum at the moment, and it is working currently. They are definitely outperforming, but that strategy for me appears to be risky and I would rather go after the stocks that people for whatever reason are ignoring that are paying high dividends just collect the dividends sit back and collect that cash flow similar situation with Valet Valet is a Brazilian mining company uh, they focus more on iron ore and uh, again this stock has been in a downtrend for quite a while this thing is still in a clear downtrend the price is below uh, the conversion line, the conversion line is below the baseline, they're, they're below the cloud, and you have this lagging strand below there. And even on the short term, you have a crossover of the MACD. So there's no suggestion at this point that this is going to turn around. But the current dividend on this stock is over 20%. So this is kind of crazy. I think the dividend could get cut. I don't know why they would want to pay a 20% dividend, but even if they cut it in half, 10 to 12% dividend is quite good. You can really not match that as far as dividends go in this current market environment. So this is something I'll continue to watch. It's easy to lose focus of these things when they're in a downtrend, but if you do keep focus and you find where this thing really starts to turn around, and start building a position in something like this, uh, you could be collecting quite a high dividend with relatively low risk. Uh, so again, I think this is a super good value here. The PE is three, that's pretty crazy. Uh, you've got a price to book of over two. So yeah, again, a little high, but I think, again, this to me is something that I'll be holding really forever at least uh, well yeah I, I wouldn't plan to sell something like this that's paying that high of a dividend that's been that stable for that long and I think the price to book could come down as inflation kicks in the value of the commodities the underlying commodities that this company owns will therefore increase relative to the value of the currency so this to me is a good way to collect cash flow as well as 
inflation protection. Uh, good current ratio, well capitalized. Uh, fair, it's an okay return on equity. It's double digits, you got a 15% return. A little higher debt, but well manageable at this point. It's not above the actual equity in the company. Barrick Gold, this is an interesting one. We have a little bit of a different story uh, as far as a trading perspective. Here we have a buy rating, and I would tend to agree with that. Again, on the MACD, you're having conflicting signals. So this is saying on the short term, this could be going further to the downside. But as I discussed earlier, this can give you a lot of false signals, and this could break back up to the upside. So what I'm seeing here is the conversion line above the baseline, the conversion line above the leading strand B, you've got a, a twist. So this is a very strong bullish signal here when you get a twist and you're starting a green cloud. Uh, you have the lag, lagging strand which peaked above the cloud. So this is really a confirmation. When this thing gets fully above the, the uh, leading strand B, and if we can hold above the cloud here, maybe come back down and test, this, this cloud becomes an area of support. So if we can test that in the short term and hold, this looks like it definitely could continue to the upside. You can see how this charting system can be uh, useful. It has many different alerts, many different confirmations. So when all of the confirmations are aligning, you have a very, very strong signal here. Uh, and this company also has a dividend of over 3%, so fairly decent. It's not, not terrible. Uh, so if you're someone who would be interested in investing in gold, this seems to be a fair value with potentially a decent entry price. So it's got a PE of around 18, price to book 1.7 great current ratio i mean this is super well capitalized a fair return on equity 10 percent return it's okay not too bad and low debt so for a capital intensive company uh, this is pretty impressive similar situation with pan american silver again on the short term you have this macd crossover which could be giving a false signal here because if you look at this ichimoku cloud strategy you have the price above the cloud you've got even this lagging strand now is above this cloud you've got the conversion line over the baseline you do have this short-term correction so in the very very short term you could look at the candlesticks and look at the macd to confirm this entry you also have a twist here now this particular stock pays around a, a little over one percent dividend so not as great uh, I'm looking for stocks with higher dividends personally, but it's an interesting option. So the PE is around 22, price to book, a little high there. But again, I think the same story with inflation would bring this down in the future. A great current ratio. Return on equity is a little lower here, but the total debt to equity is insane. When I first looked at this, I thought, okay, 130% debt to equity, but no, this is actually 1% debt to equity. So they have around $40 million in debt. Their market cap is around $5 billion. So insanely low debt here. And with the increasing need for silver, for things like solar panels, the electrification of the grid, all of that, definitely something to watch here. And the trading pattern does appear like it could be confirming a reversal here. So that's an interesting one. A uh, different type of stock here. So this is SoftBank. The reason this is on my radar is this was really in a downtrend for quite a while. So this was up near $50. Got down to, it got almost cut in half here, around $25, $26. And here again, you do see this Ichimoku cloud signal um, does appear to be confirming a reversal. You've got the price coming up above 
uh, the conversion and baseline above this cloud. We are back in the cloud now. So this will have to be watched, but if we did get a confirmation of support here, and it does look like we could be forming a twist with a green cloud beginning to form. And if we can get that lagging strand above this cloud here, we would really have all of the indicators in alignment. So this is one to watch. It could be close to really having a strong confirmation signal for an entry point. And again, it's down 50%. And this is a huge company in Japan. So the PE is super low, 3.7. Price to book, 1.67. Current ratio is a little low, uh, but this is a fast growing company. The return on equity, 56% here. And this company owns 25% of Alibaba, and they own a lot of venture capital companies, small tech companies, really quickly growing companies all throughout the world. They do have high debt, though, so that is one downside here this is a company that i would be interested more in swing trading not something that i would want to invest in i think uh, because it's down so much you could get a quick uh, few percent out of this have some type of reversion some retracement back up in a more reasonable area but not something i would plan to hold for many years such as the mining stocks which I discussed earlier. Similar with Facebook, this is more something that looks to me like a swing trade. Here we have the indicators all pointing back upwards. We are in the equilibrium zone though. So we got a strong pullback here and somewhat of a reversal. This personally looks, you could do, you could use several strategies here. A strategy that I like to do with these big companies like this is to sell puts. I like to do that because the market cap on these companies is so massive to get a, something like a 10% or 20% decrease in the price takes a lot of selling tens of billions of dollars. Uh, worth of selling in order for the price to drop that much. So selling uh, put spreads or something like that seems like a reasonable strategy. Because of the resistance, I would probably prefer to use a strategy like that rather than swing trading because you could run up into some resistance here. Although I think Facebook will eventually pull through and they have a lot of cash to buy up smaller companies, competing companies, and I think they really have a large moat. So again, not the cheapest company, uh, PE of 24, price to book pretty high here. Uh, but the current ratio is five. Pretty good return on equity here, and again, very low debt. Ford, so Ford is the opposite. This is on my personal short sell watch list. With the Ichimoku cloud system, when you have the conversion line extremely far extended from the baseline, that suggests you could get a correction in price here. And here you have a uh, small divergence. You have a crossover of the MACD. And so this thing looks like it's ready for correction. And if you look at the fundamentals, they are not very good here. Uh, the PE of 25, the price to book of one, that's okay. The current ratio is okay. But I mean, they're just bleeding cash here. And the total debt to equity, 531%. They have a lot of debt. And I don't, I find it hard to believe that they're going to be able to compete with some of these electric car companies with the push that's going on here. They're going to either need some 
government assistance or some type of partnership in order to survive. And there did appear to be some news which would suggest uh, you can you can look that up and to the recent news, but suggest that there would will be a fall here. It's just a question of getting in quick enough uh, to catch that drop. So this is a Brazilian oil company here. So this is still showing a sell here. We've got a MACD crossover suggesting further pressure on the downside, but you've got a strong support level here. So this is something that I think is good to watch. The reason, there's a couple of reasons why I find this stock interesting. One is the current value. So it's got a PE ratio of 2.5, pretty low there. A price to book of 1.2, fair value, okay, current ratio of 1. Uh, a lower return on equity here and a decent amount of debt. But due to this low PE, the thing is this company has over a 10% dividend at the moment. And with the current climate of the U.S. administration as far as oil goes, closing down some of the pipelines, and uh, making it a little more difficult to get domestic oil. I think potentially other countries such as Russia and potentially this company here from Brazil could see further demand. Just because you're shutting down the oil pipelines does not mean the demand is going to decrease. In fact, I believe the demand will definitely be increasing at least in the short to medium term. So because of the value here and because of this high dividend, this is something I'm looking to watch. But again, we do not have a clear confirmation. In fact, the price is below all of these indicators here and the MACD is crossing downwards. So this is something that'll have to be watched in the future, in my personal opinion. And once it gets confirmation of the upside, it would, could be a good entry for a decent dividend paying stock that you could hold for a while. So I hope this helped you guys. I hope you found some interesting content here. Uh, if you're still watching it at this point, I appreciate it. Uh, if you're interested in this type of content and investment research, both fundamental and technical, feel free to subscribe for future videos. Please hit the like comment let me know what you think do you own any of these companies is this are these companies something that you're watching or are you looking into more of these higher momentum companies that are definitely going up faster but do tend to be at least more risky again thank you all for watching take care and i will see you in the next one